my stepmom doesn't want me there. I'm not allowed to go visit my dad anymore because my stepmom doesn't like that I do porn. But then he told me that when I was like, can we like go get coffee and like we go like get breakfast? And he's like, I don't want to be seen in public with you. And that just <laughs> hurt so bad. And it sucks. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, this is Theo. Today we will see some video from S. Bianco. This title called Why So Many P Stars Are Dying. Oh my god. I don't know why, but he will tell us what is happening. So let's watch it. 2024 has been awful for the adult film industry. Recently, adult film stars have been dropping like flies. Cagney Lynn Carter, dead at 36 from taking her own life. Sophie Leone, dead at 26 from a suspected homicide. Jesse Jane, dead at 43 from an overdose. Thana Fields, dead at 24. At the time of this video being recorded, Emily Willis is in critical condition from an overdose and her family is expecting the worst. It seems like every week I've been hearing about some adult film star just randomly dying. So what the fuck is going on or better yet what is going on in the industry well the adult film industry is probably one of the worst industries to work in ever now that really shouldn't be too surprising an industry as gross and obscure as porn being a really weird place to work i mean no surprise right but people don't really seem to grasp just how awful this industry really is and the genuine terrible effect it has on people and on society so let's cut the bullshit and just get right into it so how exactly is the industry connected to all of these deaths? Well, I think a good start is looking at one of the people that I mentioned earlier, Thina Fields. Now, months before she died, she talked about facing serious abuse in the adult industry. It is very difficult to be a woman and create adult content when society is literally in shit. At 24 years old, she was found unalive in her home. But one of the weirdest things is that the cause of her death was not really made available. Now, when interviewed about her death, her friend and fellow adult film star, Ali Alejandra Sweet said that I can't really share too many details right now because I'm saddened by the news. Now, the production company that she was signed to, Milky Peru, released a statement on their Instagram dedicated to Thina. We still can't believe this. We refuse to be without you. We would like to see you one more time. We hope someone wakes us up from this bad dream. You will always be in our hearts. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your life. And this is the same production company that she was facing all of this abuse from at the time. It's pretty suspicious behavior, don't you think? Now, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist here, but maybe, just maybe, it was an inside job. Nah, I'm just kidding. I don't think it's gone that far, but it's still kind of fucking weird. Now, Thana is not the first to open up about the dark side of this industry. In fact, almost every single major adult film star that you can think of has opened up about the abuse, exploitation, and the serious consequences of it. Lana Rhodes, one of the biggest stars out there, has talked about being forced to do certain scenes that she really did not want to do. During my short stint in porn, the really extreme acts were what was popular, and that's why being the number one performer in the industry at the time everyone wanted to make money off me so they pushed me to do these things um, and it just gets really extreme like you were saying abusive I don't want to go into too much detail like honestly some of my experiences are really humiliating for me and I wish that they never happened Many adult film stars, both male and female, are often forced to do scenes that they really, really do not want to perform. Now, not every job is perfect. In almost any job that you want to be successful in, you have to do things that you don't want to do. Actors often have to take roles that they don't really like that much in order to boost their career and get recognition. But if you're trying to get your foot into the adult film industry, you don't really get a say. Many scenes often require doing extremely gross and painful things in order to get the job. I'm not gonna describe any of those things, but I think you can use your imagination. Now, a lot of these girls start in the industry when they're young, as young as 18 years old, as a matter of fact. But oftentimes, many are recruited even younger. Tracy Lords, one of the most successful actresses in her time, was only 15 years old when she started. Oh she used God. a fake birth certificate and a fake driver's license to claim that she was way older than she actually was and starred in many, many movies. In the 80s, she was one of the highest paid adult film actresses at the 
time earning over a thousand dollars per day and this was all while she was only 16 years old but when she turned 18 the authorities finally looked into the tip that she was actually underage and they discovered that her credentials were completely fake the owners of her video agency excitement videos were arrested and any film that she starred in was now legally considered child porn in court the government prosecutors claimed that tracy was manipulated by the industry and was drugged to do certain scenes that she did not want to do however in her autobiography she claims that anyone who worked with her never once saw her take drugs and that she was fully aware of her actions but many of her co-workers and even her sister have heavily criticized the book for lying now this is the most well-known case of underage actors in adult films and probably the most controversial one because it's kind of hard to decide who to really put the blame on. Was it Tracy's fault for lying to the company by using fake documents that looked real? Maybe the company genuinely did not know. Or should the movie company have done a better job at checking her background and making sure that she really was of age? Keep in mind, it was the 80s. The internet was still pretty new and wasn't very advanced. But that's not really even close to the worst of it. Because one of the worst secrets in the industry easily is the human trafficking. Now, over 4.8 million people globally are sexually exploited and more than 20% of those people are children. And many of these people are used solely for the purpose of pornography. The number one site where all this content has been uploaded is Pornhub, the world's biggest porn site, the site that both you and me have been on before. And if you genuinely have the balls to say that you've never been on it, you're a goddamn liar. In December 2018, a 15-year-old girl randomly went missing after she left her home. The mom did find her daughter 10 months later, but she didn't find her through the authorities. She found her on Pornhub, where she was featured in over 50 videos. Don Gianni, a oh, substitute no. teacher, was arrested after she posted videos of her assaulting her 14-year-old family member on the website. And the only reason the authorities knew about it was because one of her classmates saw the video online and reported it. Rose Columba was 14 years old when she was kidnapped by two men and R-worded for 12 hours straight. They uploaded the footage to the hub and several months later, students at her school were sharing the link on MySpace and tagging her. Several versions of this video were uploaded to the site with one of them having over 400,000 views. Now, over the course of six months, she reached out to Pornhub and explained multiple times that she was a minor and that this was assault and begged them to take the video down but never got a response. Until finally, she created a new email posing as a lawyer and demanded they take the video down or legal action would occur. And there are many, and I mean many stories just like this. These are only a few. However, one of the most infamous situations that brought attention to this issue was one of Pornhub's partner channels, Girls Do Porn. The website's founder, Michael Pratt, created multiple fake modeling websites and invited women to apply for a modeling gig. He posted he posted ads for these on Craigslist and specifically targeted college towns and wanted women who were 18 to 21 years old. Once the women applied, he then told them that the job they actually applied for was for porn and not modeling. Cause you know, you can't really recruit porn stars through Craigslist. At least I don't think so. Now these girls were initially offered two to six grand for 30 minutes of shooting. Now many of the girls, predictably, were hesitant to actually sign the contract and take the gig even though it was good money for what seemed like very little little labor. So Michael tried to manipulate the women and get them to sign contracts in very shady and straight up illegal ways. He hired reference girls and their job was to earn the women's trust and try and deceive them into signing the contract by lying to them and withholding certain information. For every contract that these reference girls got signed, they earned 25 to 200 bucks. And Michael had these contracts written in a very, very complicated way to make them as confusing as possible. These contracts never won once mentioned the website named Girls Do Porn and never mentioned the fact that they would be uploaded to the website even though they were. To really try and push the girls to sign the contracts, they would get them extremely drunk or even get them to take hard drugs, sometimes against their will. And they also didn't let any of the girls keep any of the contracts. After the girls signed, they immediately got them to work. Instead of the initial filming for 30 minutes like they were promised, shooting lasted for a whole nine hours straight. And the content that the girls were filming was so violent and rough that some of them started bleeding uh, down there. The girls were often refused breaks and the company employees even tried to get the girls to have sex with them, even though that is not part of the business. An employee even forced one of the girls to have sex with him at gunpoint. And 
And even after all of that, more than half of the girls only received a fraction of the money that they were promised. They made up complete BS excuses to try and hog them out of the cash, like, oh, you look too old, oh, you don't look like your picture, oh, your acting wasn't good enough. Complete bullshit. The girls sued the parent company of Pornhub for $80 million, and this lawsuit was huge at the time. Pornhub has historically handled these situations terribly by providing close to no action for non-consensual and underage content being posted to their website. The way their website worked was similar to YouTube where almost anyone can post to it, and while they may not have encouraged what necessarily was going on, they were profiting from it, which the parent company quite literally admitted to. It wasn't until the extreme rise of controversy and lawsuits that they finally changed their platforms that only verified users can post videos to their website. Any unverified videos or users were removed immediately. Their history with human trafficking is quite literally so bad that there is a whole Netflix documentary where porn stars talk about the connection from Pornhub to human trafficking, and I highly recommend it's very much worth checking out. Now this is all pretty terrible stuff, but how does all of this actually tie in to the deaths of the porn stars that we've been seeing? Well if you look at the death of almost every Every actress, they usually die from one of two things, drugs or taking their own life. There is a very high correlation of people who are sexually traumatized and abusing drugs and alcohol and self-harm. From a UCLA study, more than 50% of porn stars reported using marijuana, 1 in 5 reported using cocaine, and 1 in 5 reported using ecstasy or Xanax. And one third also said that they used hard drugs sometime within the last three months. And all of this is self-reported data, so those could be a lot higher stats. Many of these women are using drugs or self-harm to most likely cop with the trauma they experienced or to try and hide the shame of their career. Hence why we see so many overdoses and people taking their life. Riley Reed, one of the biggest names in the industry, talked about how her career basically completely ruined her personal life. I've lost my whole family and it sucks. So a lot of times when people ask me if they should do porn, I tell them no. I tell them that it makes life really hard. It makes dating really hard. It makes your family life really hard. It makes intimacy hard, it, you're putting yourself out there and the world is now judging you. You have to be okay with being shamed every day of your life. I don't even want to have children because I do porn because I'm worried of the way that people will treat my child. With me personally, my mom was supportive in the beginning. She kind of just let me do whatever, that I think it was a good thing. I had a lot of freedom. As time progressed and I became successful, I started to feel like my mom was using me so that she could live a more luxurious lifestyle. When I started to set like these boundaries, not giving her money or things like that, it made our relationship a bit more difficult and almost toxic. And so it sucks. I don't have a mom anymore. I don't talk to her. I miss having a mom. I feel like you can't rewind and you can't go back. I don't have that relationship with her anymore. I don't ever think I will. And that bums me out. Bums me out a lot. I talked to my dad and he struggles with my my job being in the industry. He's also religious. Recently I wanted to go visit him and he said that I, I can't go visit because his wife, my stepmom, doesn't want me there. I'm not allowed to go visit my dad anymore because my stepmom doesn't like that I do porn. But then he told me that when I was like, can we like go get coffee and like we go like get breakfast? And he's like, I don't want to be seen in public with you. And that oh just my hurt so bad. And it sucks. I lost my family. I don't talk to like my brothers or sisters. I think that they all kind of like try to take advantage of me and stuff or they're just like my dad don't want to be around me. So even with all the horrific things going on in the industry, why work in it? Many of these women choose to work in this career. Most of them can also choose not to, right? Well, it's not that straightforward. Like I've said, many of the people who pick this path are extremely young. Listen, we don't tend to make the best decisions when we're young. They see the promise of money, fame, and a rock star lifestyle, and they immediately jump into it without a second thought. Many of these production companies target these young women for that specific reason. 
reason. And lots of other people genuinely just do it for the money, not necessarily because they want to. Like for example, Brianna Coppage was a teacher in St. Louis, Missouri and really loved her job, but being a teacher was not enough to pay the bills. She started OnlyFans as a side hustle and ended up making more than double her salary as a teacher. She had no intention to leave her job as a teacher, but once the school found out about her account, she was fired. And she then focused on doing OnlyFans full time because it was her only option. And it's a damn shame that she was only doing it to get the bills paid, not because she liked doing it. Now the industry has improved over time and has learned from history. Many recruiters and production companies act much more ethically to their cast and crew. People who hire these actresses fully make sure that they are only doing it because they are passionate about the business and don't want them to make a mistake that they will later regret. And many popular websites have now started implementing much more control to prevent non-consensual content from being uploaded. However, the abuse and the consequences still remain. Even if it has improved, it's still an industry that has way more cons than pros. Obviously, it's a horrible industry. It's not a judgment, but it's still stigmatized in many societies, so it's limit your work career outside the industry. So don't ruin your life. And if you have any question and suggestion, please let me know in the comment section. And it's all about for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.